Hi, welcome to part four of the Energy Treasure Hunt training. In this session, we'll discuss the event in its entirety, including pre-training, hosting the on-site event, and follow-up. One week before the scheduled on-site event, you'll want to meet with the team leaders to review the plan for the treasure hunt, its tools, and any outstanding issues. This pre-training meeting should be conducted by the facilitator and the host contact. The training usually lasts only about one to two hours and can be conducted by a conference call or as a web conference if needed. If this pre-training is the first meeting with the site team leaders, you should spend some time explaining the objectives of the treasure hunt, what you hope to achieve, and how it fits into your company's energy program and business objectives. Regarding pre-training topics, at the start of the meeting, the facilitator can set the stage by talking about big picture motivations for saving energy, what you hope to achieve, and how it fits into your company's energy program and business objectives. But you also want to finalize the agenda. You want team leaders to describe who will be participating to make sure you have your bases covered, review safety and logistical issues, orient the team to the opportunity detail sheets, and encourage the leaders to test them, and do the same for the energy calculators. You also want to confirm that plant management will participate in the report out session that occurs at the end of the treasure hunt. Lastly, make sure there's enough time for the team leads to ask questions and clarify any details on the event. The three-day on-site event is the core activity of the energy treasure hunt. Typically, if you're a facility that runs five days a week, you want to start on a non-production day to see what equipment has been left on. Depending on the size of the plant, the treasure hunt may not take three days, but make sure to start when the plant is not operational. So the event's going to kick off with a welcome and a quick tour of the facility, and then the technical teams will split off to their respective areas to identify possible opportunities. Those opportunities will be analyzed and energy and cost saving calculations made, all of those results summarized, and then a report of findings given to the organization or facility management. Now the following slides will walk you through each day of the treasure hunt event. The treasure hunt event starts off with a classroom training that provides the members with an overview of the activity. You'll want to welcome participants and introduce team members, provide context for the event, review the agenda and discuss the key energy treasure hunt concepts, review teams, participants and roles, and brainstorm for potential technical opportunities such as utility supply and building systems, process equipment, etc. And also demonstrate use of the opportunity detail sheets and calculation examples. You may also show example opportunities identified during previous energy treasure hunts if you have those. And this introduction also gives the plant manager an opportunity to explain how the plant runs. Which is also the reason to have a facility tour before the teams break out to start identifying opportunities. And again, it's a good idea to tour the facility the first time during non-operating hours. Then the teams are going to break out into their respective areas and look for things that are impacting energy when the site isn't carrying out typical operations. Things to look at here include lights, computers, and other equipment left on, HVAC systems that have been left running, or other building or process equipment left running. Then teams complete the opportunity detail sheets. And at the end of day one, the team presents the ideas to the entire group uh, for feedback and cross-pollinating team knowledge. Day two is very similar to day one, except now the focus is during business hours. Observable energy efficiency opportunities may include temperature set points too high or too low, air volume more than needed, lighting on in areas where it's not needed, or other opportunities. And again, the team is going to complete the opportunity detail sheets with their findings to quantify the savings. As a reminder, during operational periods, you may want to involve equipment operators or ask them questions, so it's very important that the treasure hunt is well publicized in advance and framed in a fun way so that the equipment operators and other plant staff aren't surprised or, or put off by the presence of the team and so that hopefully they will be excited to participate in the energy saving adventure. So you want people to participate and ask questions. At the end of day two, teams regroup again to present and discuss findings and solutions. Then from across days one and two, the top three opportunities are decided by the team, and these opportunities will be highlighted in the summary presentation. The summary presentation to management is perhaps the most important activity of the entire process. It typically includes a comprehensive description of opportunities, completed opportunity detail sheets, and photos, slides, and graphics depicting the various opportunities. 
The goal is to provide the value of the energy treasure hunt and to gain management approval to implement measures. So it's very important to spend some time on day three preparing for the summary presentation before it's given. Typically the energy manager gives a short introduction and then we'll turn it over to the team to present the top three opportunities. So make sure you give your team some time to rehearse. So you may have people who aren't used to presenting and practice time will allow them to fine tune their presentation, make them more comfortable with delivering the material and thus really able to own the solutions. Many times it will be the site personnel and often the operators of equipment who will be implementing the low and no cost saving opportunities so it's a good idea to let them present to be associated with the solution and get credit for that but then also be responsible for the implementation so you are subtly instilling a sense of pride to see the savings through and giving people exposure when they might not otherwise get it. It's a really good way to build confidence in the overall program and win the support of plant personnel. So you want the summary presentation to build a case supported by the energy saving calculations. You can start by discussing the big picture importance of energy efficiency as context for why the energy treasure hunt was conducted, but make sure to keep it simple and quickly get to the heart of the matter, uh, which are the specific details on the treasure hunt. So you want to include things like the energy treasure hunt teams in their focus areas, the top three priorities by each team with photos and details, cost and payback of each measure, a complete list of all the measures found is also a good idea, an energy summary as it relates to the targets you've established for your plant, proposed next steps, and also the summary of requests or approvals needed from organization or facility leadership. When giving presentations to senior management, it's often helpful to prioritize and present the top three energy saving projects. Here's an example of how to present a savings opportunity. Notice that information on savings, implementation, costs, and payback period are all clearly presented. And just because you highlight the top three projects does not mean that you should not discuss the other opportunities. It's very beneficial to show management the other smaller or more expensive opportunities as well. This slide provides an example of how other opportunities can be summed up for management presentation. It's also a very good idea to include in your summary presentation a summary of costs and savings. You want to present findings in a way that is meaningful to senior management. So for example, uh, in the first chart, current energy spend, uh, possible savings from opportunities, and then the spend after savings is shown. And then the second chart identifies the opportunities by payback period so that a prioritization method can be developed for implementation. So soon after the event is complete, between one to, to four weeks after the on-site event, make sure you do the things you see on this slide. You don't want to wait too long, certainly no more than a month, uh, to follow up to make sure action is being taken on the energy improvements. The most important part is to make sure that the opportunities are implemented so that savings can be reaped. And the last thing you want is for the list of ideas to go into a three-ring binder and get placed on a bookshelf and no implementation occurs. As the event wraps up, it's important to reflect a bit on how things went. And you may want to ask yourself these questions. Have all of the opportunities that were identified been scheduled or completed? Who coordinated and who participated? Are there areas in the facility that were not covered during the previous energy treasure hunt that we may want to hit the next time around? Who should attend the next energy treasure hunt? And how can we expand our energy treasure hunt engagement and involvement for even more savings? So planning for energy treasure hunts should be ongoing. Energy treasure hunts are an important tool for advancing an energy program. Not only will you save energy directly from the identified opportunities, but you'll also be engaging and training your employees to be looking for new opportunities on an ongoing basis. We encourage you to use the energy treasure hunt guide to reinforce the concepts discussed today and as a step-by-step -step guidance for organizing your own energy treasure hunt.
So you may also consider taking credit for your energy saving efforts. Recognition is a tool that also motivates people and can keep driving positive change in your organizations. There are two recognition opportunities for manufacturing plants. The first is to obtain Energy Star certification. This is available only to certain facility types who rank in the top quartile compared to peers. And the other is the Energy Star Challenge for Industry to achieve a 10% reduction in energy within five years. There's more information about these recognition opportunities at the links you see on the screen, and each one is a good uh, way to motivate and leverage employees. Now remember, the Energy Treasure Hunt Guide has checklists and other resources to help you with organizing your energy treasure hunt. And this concludes the Energy Treasure Hunt video series. Please visit our website for more information. Happy hunting!